One of Fallout's greatest villains is, without a doubt, Mr. House, who, fun fact, was voiced by Rene Aubergenois, who also played Odo on Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Save the excuses, Quark. Just tell us what you were up to. I love Fallout New Vegas, and I love villains like Mr. House, because he's the sort of villain who a lot of people might be taken in by his words and not realize what a villain he is. Love that sort of character. So much preferable to someone like Kaisar, who, let's be honest, is pretty obviously evil incarnate. And that's why I was so surprised and disappointed when Mr. House did not get to have his own Fallout pre-con deck, and was not only relegated to the backup commander for Kaisar's deck, but, well, there's no way to successfully even play with Mr. House in that deck. You see, the Hail Kaisar Precon is a go-wide creature deck with a sacrifice sub-theme. Mr. House, President and CEO, does create creature tokens, but not without rolling dice. And in the Hail Kaisar Precon, there is precisely one card, not named Mr. House, that rolls any dice. Luck Bobblehead. Yeah, pretty disappointing. While I was thrilled to get a Mr. House card, I wanted a Mr. House pre-con, so I decided to build my own, but there's a catch. Now, you may be familiar with our Build Your Own Precon series, where we brew up $45 Commander Precons and then offer upgrade options for those looking to spend a little bit more cash. This video is not that. Not exactly. What we have done is taken the total value of the Kaisar Commander deck on the day of release and using that value created a precon around Mr. House. Basically, Wizards of the Coast put $109.21 worth of value into the Kaisar deck. So we are going to imagine that they made a Mr. House deck instead and use that same value. And this is that deck. It's the lost Fallout Commander precon featuring Mr. House. I'll even include a $45 starter version if you like, but this video will focus on the full $109 version of the deck. And if I do say so myself, this deck is quite a house. Huh? Presenting The House Always Wins, the lost Fallout precon deck built around Mr. House, President and CEO. This lost Commander precon is all about rolling dice, then converting those die rolls into robots and, of course, corporate profits, aka treasure tokens. Because rolling dice is not a magic mechanic that gets used very often, the vast majority of cards for this precon will come from two sources the various DD sets and and uh, the legacy legal Unfinity cards, but mostly D&D. &D. At one point, we thought Mr. House should have attractions, because of course that's kind of on theme, you know, New Vegas attractions, and they kind of go well, and I thought, no, nah, I want to actually play this deck, so no attractions. There's no attractions in this deck. There are, however, lots of artifact synergies, since Mr. House creates both artifact creature tokens and treasure tokens that are, obviously, artifacts. Not only that, but since Mr. House is himself an artifact creature, he benefits from many of these synergies as well. Again, this precon is based on the premise that Wizards of the Coast put the exact same amount of value into a Mr. House precon, but I'll also talk both budget and upgrade options along the way. All that being said, let's dive right in, or should I say, let's roll the dice? Let's begin with the president and CEO himself, Mr. House. Mr. House is a 0-4 legendary artifact creature, human. He has two abilities. The first is a triggered ability that rewards you for rolling dice. Anytime you roll a four or higher, create a 3-3 robot artifact creature token. Anytime you roll a six or higher, create a treasure token in addition to the robot. Mr. House's second ability helps trigger his first ability. Pay four mana and tap Mr. House. Roll a six-sided die, plus an additional six-sided die for each treasure you spend to activate this ability for a maximum of five total dice rolled if you used all treasures. So Mr. House is a payoff and an enabler all rolled into one. Pretty sweet, all things considered. But to really maximize Mr. House, we're going to be doing a lot more die rolling than just with his own activated ability. Another thing to note about Mr. House is while his ability reads at first like it's templated for six-sided dice, it will also trigger when you roll dice with more sides, including 20-sided dice. 
dice. Anytime you roll a d20, you have an 85% chance of rolling a four or higher and thus making a 3-3 robot. You also have a 75% chance of rolling a six or higher and creating a treasure token. That means that any roll a d20 card from the D&D sets is going to be Omega, Omega Juiced, Juiced in our Mr. House Precon. So with all that being said, who are our high rollers? The House Always Wins Precon has many high rollers, from one-off effects to repeatable sources of rolls, all up and down the mana curve. Your best sources of die rolls are those that provide you repeatable passive rolls. That is, rolls that you don't have to spend any resources on, whether that's mana or cards. Lightfoot Rogue is fantastic for this purpose. At two mana, it can get on board early and start accruing die rolls. In fact, Lightfoot Rogue is perfectly costed to hit the battlefield on turn two, then attack on turn three after you've cast Mr. House, more often than not giving you a 3-3 and a treasure token right away. Hoarding Ogre, Iron Mastiff, and Chaos Channeler all provide you with d20 rolls when they attack, as does Delino, Wild Mage. Each of these cards also provides some kind of effect based on their role, but those effects are just gravy. Their primary role is to roll, to provide rolls. Chaos Dragon is another example of this kind of roll enabler. At the beginning of combat on your turn, each player rolls a d20. You can't attack any player who rolled the highest, but who cares? You got to roll a d20 for free. But perhaps one of our highest rollers is one of the most powerful Planeswalker cards ever made. That's right, it's Comet, Stellar Pup, who will provide you with at least one zero resource required roll per turn, giving you at least one of its beneficial abilities depending on your result. Token generation, regrowing a cheap spell, or dealing damage to a creature or player. Of course, if you roll a six with Comet, not only do you trigger both of Mr. House's token generators, but you also get to roll two more times. Believe me, I'm not thrilled to include Comet in this deck list, but the card is simply too synergistic not to include. Maybe if we reskinned Comet as Rex Cyberhound, it would feel a little less icky. I realize Rex is a blue-white card from a different commander deck, but you know, I'd rather be looking at this Fallout Doggo than the Infinity Comet any day. Though while we're speaking of Infinity, Celebrer 8000 is another card that gives you two six-sided die rolls at the beginning of your combat step. 2d6 is less reliable than 1d20 roll in terms terms of triggering Mr. House. Though if you really want to trigger Mr. House, maybe you should start talking about unionizing. I bet that'll trigger him. Huh? Huh? All right. The upside of rolling two D6s is that you can get as many as two of each token out of a single Celebrer 8000 trigger. Plus Celebrer 8000 is a robot, so it's kind of on flavor with Mr. House. If you squint, ooh, I'm gonna reskin him as Victor. That's such good flavor. Do they even make a Victor Fallout card? No, why not? All right, well, here we go. Here's Victor. Making Universes Beyond versions of Infinity cards is one of the things about Universes Beyond I can get behind. Oh, and maybe we should reskin Monoxa, Midway Manager, a four mana creature with a six mana repeatable D6 roll outlet, as Mr. House's creepy sex robot. Did they make a magic card out of the creepy sex robot? No, not Fisto, the other one. Either way, take your pick. As we enter the Lucky 38 Casino section of our deck, we begin with the Deck of Many Things, a five mana legendary artifact that rolls a d20 for two mana and subtracting the number of cards in your hand. If you roll a zero or less, you must discard your hand, making this a risky proposition. But hey, like I said, it's a casino. But if you roll higher than a one, you get a beneficial effect based on that number and of course trigger Mr. House on a four or higher. Keep in mind that Mr. House only checks after the roll is modified by the Deck of Many Things, so if you roll a six but have three cards in your hand, Mr. House won't trigger. Strength Testing Hammer and Sword of Hours are a pair of equipment that provide additional passive die rolls on attacks. The hammer rolls a d6 to buff your creature and sometimes draw a card. While Sword of Hours buffs your creature a little bit no matter what, then rolls a d12 to see if it pumps your creature again after it deals damage. Comet Punch is, oh no, wait a minute, that's Component Pouch. Component Pouch is a mana rock that doubles as a d20 roller, or more accurately, it's a d20 roller that doubles as a mana rock, since you have to roll d20s first before it can start producing mana. Speaking of mana rocks, Luck Bubblehead is another rock roller hybrid, though the bubblehead also creates treasure tokens based on your result. Ebony Fly is a colorless mana rock that, for four generic mana, can turn into an artifact creature with power and toughness equal to your result from rolling a d6. This ability is unique in that although it costs a hefty mana amount, there is no tap restriction on it, so any spare 
four mana you have in the late game can be poured into Ebony Fly. Maddening Hex is a curse that deals damage to your opponents over time, though more importantly, it's a one-time mana investment that will roll d6s for you when your opponents cast non-creature spells. Wand of Wonder rolls d20s for four mana, and tapping the wand, unfortunately, while also stealing your opponent's instants and sorceries. Some of our remaining die roll enablers in The House Always Wins are one-time effects. A couple of these roll multiple dice at once, including Clown Car and Attempted Murder, which each roll X dice based on how much mana you spent on X. Circuits Act rolls three six-sided dice, creating up to three 1-1 one -one robot tokens depending on the number of different results you get. Reckless and Valiant Endeavor each roll two dice and sweep the board based on one result, while making either creature or treasure tokens based on the other result. Speaking of endeavors, Grave Endeavor also rolls two dice, reanimating a creature based on one result and draining your opponents based on the other. There's also Thunder Wave, another sweeper that deals damage depending on your d20 roll result. You've also got a variety of die roll based spot removal, including Contraband Livestock, which swaps a creature with a token of various sizes, Merkel's Edict, an edict that can sacrifice at least one opponent's creature, but potentially more, Six Sided Die, a usually removal spell that takes different forms depending on the number you roll. Dance Macabre is another edict, this time one that lets you reanimate one of the creatures sacrificed. And finally, another edict, Earth Cult Elemental, a six mana 6-6 six -six that makes players sacrifice a permanent. Beyond that, the House Always Wins packs a potpourri of one-off die rolls of various effects. Recruitment Drive rolls a d20 for three mana, creating creature tokens based on the result. Treasure Chest rolls a d20, almost always giving you something great, but losing you three life on a nat one. Berserker's Frenzy lets you make combat awkward for your opponents, while Will's Reversal is an awesome card in this deck, redirecting and occasionally copying a spell that targets something. For Will's Reversal, you roll a d20, then add the greatest power among creatures you control, meaning you will almost always get a six or higher to Trinister House. But I think we've talked enough about rolling dice. Mr. House has a lot more in his arsenal, especially within his Securitron bunker. In terms of Mr. House's utility cards, we have a selection that will make your rolls better. Barbarian class and Will Blade of Frontiers let you roll additional dice and ignore the lowest roll. In D&D, that's known as granting advantage. When you have one of these advantage granters in play, you don't get to count any rolls you ignore toward your Mr. House ability, as ignored rolls are ignored ignored entirely. Brazen Dwarf pings your opponents whenever you roll dice, while Reckless Fireweaver pings your opponents whenever an artifact enters play on your side of the field. In other words, most of the time that you roll dice. Ingenious Artillerist doubles up the Fireweaver's effect as well. Merkwood Bats goes berserk in this deck, pinging opponents whenever you make a robot, whenever you make a treasure, whenever you sack a robot, whenever you sack a treasure, or whenever you make or whenever you sack any other token. What a broken card, but surely this is banned and oh wait sorry i don't want to rehash that debate again we joked about triggering mr house with talk of unions but i'm far too scared to trigger the online commander twitter discourse with talk of what should or should not be banned <laughs> there's one more artifact sack payoff we should mention marionette master which deals a ton of damage whenever you sack a treasure or any other artifact you control is put into the graveyard for any other reason secure tron squadron steel overseer and intangible virtue are are a trio of two mana cards that pump up your robots. Squadron and Virtue also pump up any other creature tokens you happen to make. Priority Boarding provides occasional card advantage once per turn when you roll a die, and the House Always Wins borrows from the Doctor Who Commander decks by including a pair of Cybermen that make your robots stronger, Cybermen Patrol that gives them Afflict 3, and Cybermen Squadron granting them Myriad. Because Mr. House encourages a light treasure theme, we've got some treasure enablers as well. Well. Jan Jensen can convert spare artifact creatures into a pair of treasure tokens, or spare treasure tokens into artifact creatures. Spiteful Banditry is a board wipe that sticks around to generate treasures. Lotho, Corrupt Sheriff, and Magda, Brazen Outlaw, provide regular treasures as well. Note that Magda also gives you treasures if you attack with Brazen Dwarf. Hey, you know what they say, dwarves be brazen! 
fist bump anyone. Yeah, no. Whenever you make a treasure token, Zorn gives you an additional treasure token. But also whenever you make a treasure token, Academy Manufacturer makes a treasure, clue, and food token instead. With both of these cards in play, you can make two treasures, two clues, and two foods every time you would make a treasure. With how many tokens this deck generates, it'll be easy to draw cards every turn with Idol of Oblivion and La Shiel, Clockwork Scholar. Sacrificing your treasure tokens will trigger Crime Novelist, while Lightning Greaves protects Mr. House and allows him to activate his ability right away, if you have the mana, of course. Organic Extinction is an efficient board wipe for non-artifact creatures, meaning Mr. House and all his robots will be safe. Lastly, Dispatch is basically always going to have Metalcraft in this deck thanks to how many artifacts you create, and is therefore a fantastic little bit of removal. The mana base for House Always Wins is by default the same mana base from the Hail Kaisar Precon, with a slight tweak. I've replaced Diamond City with the more synergistic Underdark Rift. While all of these cards mentioned here and on the deck list included in this video's description are worth the same as the Kaisar deck was on the day it was released, $109, there's also a trio of cards I would recommend as potential upgrades, but they will of course put that price tag a bit over. Nonetheless, these three cards are nothing short of phenomenal in the deck, by which I mean the three ancient dragons in Mardu colors. Gold, brass, and of course the ancient copper dragon. Though you might just want to print some proxies of these reskinned as the heads of the new Vegas families, as these three cards altogether cost almost as much as the entire pre-con costs. Though even if you are averse to proxies, if you are anything like Mr. House, you'll do whatever it takes to expand your empire. In a lot of ways, this video is a reverse build-your-own pre-con, because now that I've gone over the $109 version, let's talk about how you can put this deck together for only $45, or actually, let's say $50, because that's what the Fallout pre-cons cost, or currently cost. Do they currently cost that? What do they currently put the Kaisar? If I wanted to buy Kaisar, what, what would it cost me right now to bu buy Kaisar? Is that what it currently costs? It should be $50. If it's more than $50, that's baloney. If it's less than $50, it's pretty good. You might want to, you know. But you don't pick that up. Pick up ours. Or for just $50, we've got a link in this video's description to the budget build for $50. Great way to get started. Both the full and budget deck lists are linked in this video's description. And remember that the TCC Discord server has 100% free games of Webcam Commander in a fun, positive, and well-moderated community. And all you have to do is go to discord.gg forward slash Tolarian Community College, and you can start playing playing free games of Webcam Commander, or even Modern and Pioneer and Popper, whatever Magic the Gathering format you love, it's free, so check it out. The TCC Discord section's looking for games. Next time on Shuffle Up and Play. Today, we have built decks for each other. I'm Krim. Yeah, I'm playing a progenitor ooze. My name is Chase. I will be playing Indoraptor, the perfect hybrid. I'm Princess Weeks. I will be playing Saskia, the unyielding. Me, 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 me. What'd you make for me? What'd you make for me? <laughs> it's Queen. Oh, that's so cool. That's the You're the Rabbit promo. I'm destroying the extra planner lens. That's strictly personal. There's I'm so gonna many give better five things. points. All right, I play Blasphemous Act. I'm going to hold priority. I'm scared. I get it. I'm a good deck builder and I'm frightened of my. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This is amazing. Okay. So good. Wait, wait, wait. You just said it's amazing. The deck I built for you. You just. Can we edit that out? It's amazing. Did no. I say amazing? You better not edit that I'm out. I'm under duress. In fact, play it again. <laughs>